Uh, I'm Pete Goldlust. I work in a lot of different media. I started out as a drawing, painting, cartooning guy and moved into sculpture. Did crayons for a while, had a lot of kids' arts and crafts materials, and then wound up working in more durable things to do public artwork. I got my start doing public art when we were living in Bisbee. Uh, and my wife and I had been able to move to Bisbee because we had a graphic design job that we shared working for a company in Chicago. And then this was right around the crash and we got laid off. You know, there's not a whole lot of options in Bisbee for employment. So um, it seemed like it was as good a time as any to kind of jump in and, and try public art. I was very lucky because I had a friend from school, Mary Lucking, who is an Arizona artist who does a lot of public art. And we had been looking for a way to collaborate and all of a sudden I had time on my hands. So Mary was very kind and kind of took me on as a junior partner and we did some projects together and that really helped me get my foot in the door and, and do some permanent public projects. I do a lot of my public artwork in Arizona and around the Phoenix area. Sometimes, especially for a permanent projects, it's, you know, sometimes it's a gateway to the city, so they want something that's really gonna represent the city. Sometimes it's very prescribed, but the ones that I tend to go for are the, are the ones that are more open-ended. Anything that they, it says that they want a sense of fun and play and accessible to kids and that kind of thing is always the things that I look for. The Influx program is a great place to start, particularly if you're in the Phoenix area, because it really was conceived as a way to give artists an introduction to public art. The program, I believe, was started in Scottsdale and quickly adopted by Chandler and Phoenix and Glendale, and they all have collaborated to create these opportunities for artists to create large-scale installations for the empty storefronts. So it's a way for the artists to have a chance to, to work in public and to have their work seen outside a gallery, and it's a way for the property owners to have their property look like it's vital and happening uh, at a time when it's empty. So apparently it's worked out really well for everybody, and uh, it's spread to something like 10 different cities around the valley and just outside. For most of the sites, most of them are indoors, they're in a storefront, so you don't have to deal with building a sculpture that has to withstand the elements, it doesn't have to last outside forever, but it's a way to work at a large scale and kind of start addressing some of those issues without diving right in, because it's very hard to get someone to take the leap and allow you to do a permanent outdoor thing. You've got to prove yourself some way, and the Influx program is a really great way to work your way into the field. It really is responsible for me being able to do this today. I, I owe a lot to the Influx program. This is the second time actually that I've done a project with Chandler through Influx. The first time around I did a digitally printed mural that was on the front windows for the Vision Gallery. I've done a public art projects that have been kind of functional things like furniture for a streetcar stop in Tucson or a, a retaining wall kind of relief concrete work, but this is the first time I had a chance to do an actual freestanding sculpture. The piece uh, went up in April of 2019. It's gonna be up for a year. It's out there right on the corner of Arizona and Boston. So after that, we pack it back up. It comes back to uh, Oregon and I try to find another home for it. Maybe someone else will want it for another year somewhere. The sculpture started out with a bunch of iPad drawings. So this has pretty much been my studio over the last year. And when I'm working on an iPad, it's just a little $12 drawing program, the Adobe Draw. I've been able to do everything I want to with it, which has really been amazing. So these are just some of the original sketches that I pieced together. It's kind of a process of uh, putting things together and seeing what works. Working digitally really works well for me. I like being able to control and have as much color as, as I want without kind of struggling with the mediums and the, uh, just the stuff, the mess. So this is one of the drawings that ultimately became part of the sculpture here in Chandler. We're working in layers, so I'm working with my black line work on one layer, then adding colors 
in different spots and rearranging, moving things around, enlarging things, undoing things, do a lot of undoing. I like the line quality that I get with the iPad. It's a nice kind of uniform line. Then I take the iPad drawings and I export them and work on them in Illustrator on my desktop computer and you can see kind of how these things get composited together. This is how the sculpture was sort of built. It's been fun to play with over the last year um, and I think that may have as much to do with that choice as anything, just the fact that it, um, when, you, when you try a, a new tool sometimes it can loosen you up and, and free you to do things that you weren't able to do um, you know, using your other toolbox. I basically made my entire body of work from the last year on the iPad and then had things printed into uh, Giclée prints, which are uh, like high-end inkjet prints. Not terribly expensive to do. And this was one that we had fabricated in aluminum, so it's been cut out of quarter-inch aluminum and painted with automotive paint and uh, there's several layers to it. In public art, the partnerships are absolutely crucial. My first partnership with Mary Lucking, who um, gave me my start in public art, and the partnerships that you have with the fabricators that you work with. The piece here was actually fabricated by a company called Discover Mac, which is up near me in Oregon, um, but I also have been working on some work for a library in Glendale, the Heroes Park Branch Regional Library, and I did a terrazzo project working with a fantastic company here called Advanced Terrazzo, located in Phoenix, and also Magnum Companies, who I've been working with that did some, some cut metal also for the library, and they're also located in Phoenix. These are all techniques and processes that I had no experience with whatsoever. Um, you know, even in seven years of art school, they just don't cover much of this stuff um, doing durable public artwork. It's just kind of, um, kind of not really addressed. So I was very lucky to have an introduction through friends. I haven't had to learn how to weld and I haven't had to learn how to cut the metal myself or to lay the terrazzo. I can do the design and work with people that really know what they're doing. Um, it's, it's really a, a true collaboration. None of these projects are done alone. You're always relying on the people that you're working with. And for me, that's really gratifying. If you're an artist that's interested in collaboration, public art is a really good way to go. I would be remiss if I didn't give a shout out to my 10-year-old Ezra, who I have been hiring to give me the titles for all my pieces over the last year or so. He charges me $2 a title, worth every penny. Public art helps a community create a representation of itself, an identity for itself, particularly in communities like Chandler that are growing so quickly. And it's important to have a sense of place. So pieces can commemorate events, they can memorialize people, they can serve as an outlet for expression to kind of capture more universal ideas. In my case, I think there's a big emphasis on a sense of play, which of course is a big theme in Chandler as a nationally recognized city of play. So that's why I'm always happy to work in Chandler. If you're interested in seeing more, um, please visit my website at pete.goldlust.com and drop me a note. I'd love to hear from you.